Today we're going to go over the Artificial Intelligence and Technology ETF AIQ. We're going to do a deep dive into the fun objectives, its holdings, past performance, and everything else. So let's get right into it. This right here is the Artificial Intelligence and Technology ETF AIQ and is one of the biggest and most popular ETFs in the thematic space, especially in the artificial intelligence industry. So AI has caught the eye of everybody and has been the hot topic of 2024 and is also continuing to be the hot topic in 2025. Statista reports that the AI market is expected to reach $243 billion in 2025 alone with expectations to surpass $826 billion by 2030. PwC also did their own research and they estimate that AI could contribute up to $15.7 trillion to the global economy by 2030. With AI becoming an increasingly dominant force in the market, investors are looking for ways to gain exposure to this rapid growth. And that is where AIQ comes in. So let's take a closer look at how this fund provides access to companies leading the AI revolution. Let's take a look at the fund objectives of AIQ. I am at AIQ's fund page on their website. You can look this up or I'll put the link in the description as well. But scrolling down here, you can see the ETF summary. So AIQ seeks to invest in companies that potentially stand to benefit from the further development and utilization of AI in their products and services, as well as companies that provide hardware facilitating the use of AI for the analysis of big data. Looking at this section in the ETF objectives, you can also see that it tracks the index, artificial intelligence, and big data index. So let's take a deeper dive into that before we look at the actual holdings. So directly on this website, we can scroll all the way to the bottom or click documents and go to the actual index methodology summary, which is very helpful because this shows us how each company gets put into this ETF wrapper. Once again, right here, just to double check, this is the artificial intelligence and big data index. But here we can now see how the index actually categorizes exposures into two separate categories under the AI theme. So right here we have category one, artificial intelligence developers, which are companies that create AI technologies and integrate them into their own products and services, which includes machine learning software, automation tools, virtual assistants, and advanced data analytics platforms. In the second part right here, we have artificial intelligence as a service, which are companies that provide AI capabilities to customers through cloud-based platforms, APIs, and software solutions, which enable businesses to integrate machine learning, natural language processing, and automation without building their own AI infrastructures. And then here we have category two with two different subsections. One is artificial intelligence hardware, which are companies that manufacture essential components like semiconductors, memory storage, and specialized AI chips, which power the machine learning models. And then also here we have quantum computing, which are companies that develop advanced computing technology that leverage quantum mechanics to perform complex calculations at insane speeds with applications for AI, cryptography, drug discovery, and financial modeling as well. And you can see here at the bottom that the top 60 companies from category 1 and the top 25 companies from category 2 will form the index. So reading this, you could tell how the index weights itself. So you can see that it provides more emphasis on category 1 over category 2. And then here we have the selection pool. So this means that in order for companies to be selected into those categories or put into those categories, all the companies need to meet these minimum requirements. So bullet one here is that the minimum market cap of $2 billion if they're part of category one and $500 million if they're part of category two. So for category two, they're willing to let their companies be a little bit smaller, maybe higher risk, or there's just not as many companies doing these and they're allowing more companies to be a part of it. Second bullet here is the average daily turnover of at least $2 million over the last six months for both categories. This essentially just means that they want these companies trading at a certain volume so that they're somewhat liquid enough to be traded, bought, and sold into these baskets. Bullet 3 here is just essentially saying where the stock needs to be listed. Um, I'm not going to name all these countries. You can see here, but generally some of the biggest countries, United States, Canada, Taiwan, South Korea, and some other companies. Bullet 4 here is traded on 90% of the eligible trading days in the last six months. And then lastly here, free float percentage of total shares outstanding of at least 10% or minimum free float market capitalization of a billion dollars. Here we also have the weighting scheme, which requires a minimum weight of at least 0.3%. And lastly, the index undergoes regular updates to ensure it remains aligned with its investment strategy. Specifically, the annual reconstitution to add or remove its holdings occurs on the last trading day in January. And then the semi-annual rebalance of the weighting of the stocks occur on the last trading day of July. So now let's take a look at the top holdings. Right here, you just click this button and it goes directly to it. So when you quickly glance, you could see there are tons of familiar names out here, extremely big brands. 
Um, it's a couple Chinese companies, Tencent, Alibaba, some of the main uh, Mag 7, such as Apple, Meta. You even got Netflix in here. Here's Amazon, Microsoft, NVIDIA. You have some other Asian companies, such as Samsung. You have some other legendary companies, such as Cisco, as well as IBM. If we do some research into these companies, you can see most of them are category one, which is AI software and services compared to category two, which is that AI hardware and computing. You can see right here that the top four are all category ones, AI software as a service. Tencent right here, which is the biggest holding, develops AI services and has natural language processing for its social media and cloud platforms. Alibaba offers AI solutions as well as their own type of chat GPT in China. Apple integrates AI into their devices. Meta already has their own AI, Meta AI, built under Llama. And Netflix here also uses AI for recommending movies and shows to their customers. And then here are the top six or seven. You can see that these two are the hardware companies, which falls into category two. Samsung here manufactures AI-powered chips and memory storage, which is used for smartphones, smart TVs, as well as cloud computing. And then Cisco here builds networking hardware and AI-powered cybersecurity that helps businesses manage and protect their data. The top holdings list gets refreshed every single day, and you can scroll to see every single company that is involved. So let's take a look at the past performance of this ETF since inception of 2018 using this handy drip calculator, which I will provide in the link below. And real quickly, this is a website that helps users calculate and visualize the potential return on investment and compound growth of dividend reinvestment plans, also known as DRIP, for individual stocks or ETFs as well. So let's chart the $10,000 invested and see where it takes us. So as we can see here, this ETF has done extremely well, returning 171% without dividends reinvested, and then roughly 175% with dividends reinvested over a 6.8 year period. So average annual returns, if your dividends are reinvested, are roughly 16% over the 6.8 year period, which is very solid. But as always, past performance does not promise future performance, so let's keep that in mind. Now lastly, let's take a look at some of the key numbers of the AIQ ETF. So here we have net assets, which also refers to as AUM or assets under management, which measures an ETF's total market value. So AIQ's ETF AUM is roughly $3.2 billion at the time of recording, indicating a really strong investor appetite for these AI ETFs. So also here, let's take a look at the 30-day SEC yield, which is another way to measure the dividend yield of this ETF. And as we can see here, the 30-day SEC yield is at 0.10%. Considering that AI companies prioritize innovation over dividend distribution, this yield is relatively typical. However, income-focused investors might find it low, while growth-oriented investors may view it as a minor trade-off for exposure to cutting-edge AI technologies and high-growth companies. Taking a look here at the total expense ratio, an expense ratio measures the annual fees associated with the ETF's operations, which include management and distribution costs. So AIQ's ETF gross expense ratio is 0.68%, which is relatively competitive for a high-growth AI-focused fund. However, cost-conscious investors may explore lower-cost index funds as alternatives. That wraps up our review of AIQ, the AI technology ETF. I am extremely excited about AI's potential, and I genuinely believe that AI will be instrumental in basically everything we do in the foreseeable future. Now, I'd love to hear from you guys watching this video. Please drop your thoughts in the comments below. Please don't forget to hit the like button, share with others, and subscribe for more in-depth ETF reviews. Thank you.